This is What on Earth Happened to Cicadas? I'll look at how cicadas are going in Sydney and what we can do to help them. The call you heard in the intro was a green grocer cicada, one of the loudest Australian cicadas. The smaller cicadas can be quiet, but the larger ones can be so loud at around 120 decibels that it causes pain. But that wonderful evocative call is a great way to confuse predators or just drive them away because it's just too loud to be near. But mostly it's a love song, a kind of serenade to find a partner. But for me, that sound was the sound of summer. I remember the first time I saw a cicada, I think I was about four years old, and it was on the sleeve of my shirt. And I looked down and there were these huge googly eyes just staring up at me and I was terrified. But when I finished screaming, I came to love them. But I haven't heard them much in years, not like I used to. It may be in part because they emerge in cycles with boom years and quiet years. They have an amazing, unusual life cycle. So the female lays the eggs on stems and branches of trees and when the nymphs hatch, they drop to the ground and burrow into the soil where they spend years sucking the sap from tree roots. Now, depending on the species, the time they spend underground varies and we often don't know exactly how much time it is. So, for example, for a small cicada like the red-eyed fairy cicada, it might be about a year underground. For a larger cicada like the green grocer, maybe it's six to seven years. It could be as little as four and as much as ten, we're not sure. And the North American periodical cicadas, wonderfully called magicicadas, live the longest underground. They emerge after 13 or 17 years. And once cicadas emerge into their adult state above ground, they live for a really short time, just a matter of weeks. Unless they become lunch sooner. In looking into these crazy creatures, I found out something really stunning about Australia. So it turns out that Australia is a global cicada biodiversity hotspot. It's like we're the cicada capital of the world. Numbers are rubbery, but it seems there's probably more than 350 named species and maybe around 800 to 1,000 species altogether. So to find out what's happening to them, I spoke to Dr. Nathan Emery, a plant ecologist with a sideline in cicadas so passionate that he's written a field guide to them and he set up a citizen science project about them. So I got introduced to cicadas at a very young age by my father. We, we would go out to national parks and, and reserves and catch cicadas and um, continually add to his um, growing collection, which I, I think now has gotten to almost just about um, it's probably the second largest in the state behind the museum. Wow. Um, spending that time out in the bush and just appreciating things and, uh, and you know, enjoying the, the surrounds, the sounds, the, the sights is just what got me interested in conservation to begin with. And cicadas are a really good way of remembering what the diversity is outside your backyard because they just hit you all of a sudden in, in summer and you can't avoid them. So then I asked Nathan how they're going in the city. In my conversations I get um, a lot of people tell me that oh you know there's there's just no no cicadas around anymore you know back in the in the 70s or 80s there there'd be lots of you know you'd hear double drummers and razor grinders right in the heart of, of Sydney and you know what's what's happening there's no real sort of easy way to to answer that it's probably a combination of factors this combination of factors we'll find out more about in part two and in part three we'll look at what we can do to help cicadas live alongside us in Sydney.